Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's operator meeting. My name is Hannah Hickam, and I will be your host. And I believe our first announcement is from Diane McCoy. Uh, Diane, you can unmute yourself and take it away. All right, can you hear me okay? Yep. Awesome. Okay, um, no slides, just a quick announcement. Um, we gave an update on the Form 5B and expectations related to inactive wells. So um, according to the new rules, inactive wells are required to be plugged and abandoned within six months of becoming inactive unless an operator returns the well to production, um, submits a Form 6A with the well listed on there to designate it as out of service, or files a Form 5B inactive well notice to provide single well financial assurance for that well. The Form 5B has not been released yet. It should be ready soon. And then we'll cover the details of the form once that form is available um, at one of another operator meeting, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but many wells that have TA sundries this year since the financial assurance rules um, came into effect had a COA applied that read along the lines of um, as rule 434, this well is designated as inactive and must be plugged and abandoned, properly returned to production, have an approved 5B or be submitted on a form 6A to be designated as out of service no later than November 1st. And as we quickly approach our November 1st date and the 5B have not been available yet, we're going to allow a little bit of a grace period until December 15th to get that form 5B filed. And so um, engineering will not be doing a compliance check on those COAs related to the TA sundries until after December 15th. And um, like I said, the form 5B should be available very soon. And we'll go over the details of the actual form itself at another operator meeting. And that's all I had. Great, thank you, Diane. Um, next up is Chris Isinger. Good morning, thanks, Hannah. I also just have a couple quick announcements. The first announcement was just to reiterate what we sent out in an email uh, last Friday afternoon, um, letting people know that if for the Forum 3, we had found an inaccuracy in how we were designating low producing wells. And so we made an adjustment to the electronic form that uh, required us to re refresh all of the forms for everybody. And what this means is that you may have needed to um, re-upload your inactive well list. Um, as far as we know, that's all it should have affected. But um, if you had an inactive well list, um, it would probably appear empty after that form refresh. So you would need to re-upload it again or uh, resubmit it. Um, so that was the, the first thing, just to let people know in case they saw that and, and uh, were, uh, didn't understand why that had gone missing. Uh, the second announcement is just a reminder that um, two weeks from today, November 1st, um, is the, the new deadline for operators with uh, 50 or more wells um, to file their Form 3s. So hopefully everyone's had a chance to start looking at that Form 3. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, of course, please reach out to uh, Jane Stanzik or myself. So that's all I've got, Hannah. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. And Jane, you're up next. Good morning, everybody. Um, Hannah, do I have the power to share my screen? Uh, yes, I probably need to stop my share, though. Um, see if you can do it now. OK. So tell me if that was, was that successful? Um, it looks good. I can see a chat. Okay, yep, that looks good. Okay, um, so good morning, everybody. Um, I've got a few different things to show you. The first thing is, um, has to do with Chris's announcement just now and the email that went out on Friday that um, we did an, a refresh of the, forms that you may have built in draft. And the result of that refresh would be to clear out um, the work that you've done on your inactive well list. And someone asked me to uh, demo what that's going to look like and how to successfully re-upload 
um, the data. So this, um, as always, whatever I show you is in our on our testing server. It's not real. Um, it's just test data that um, that we use to work on the forms. So um, in this test form on, on the well data page, here's the inactive well list. And this operator has 28. So I'm gonna click on here and it's empty. And that's what would happen if you had data there as a result of the refresh. So um, I'm going to go, I'm gonna say I wanna re-import the data that I had prepared before and imported before, now I have to do it again. Um, so, course now I don't. So I'm going to go right here to this folder where I have my spreadsheet um, that I had populated with the information and um, I select it and then I hit open and it's importing it and boom there's my data. So it came it came back. I'll show you what that spreadsheet looked like. Oops, I'll try to. So I had completed the reason for no production and for every well, either a planned return to production date or a planned plugging date. Um, so that's what you need to do to um, repopulate this data in your form since our refresh wiped it out. So if you have questions about what I just did, um, you know, put them in the the chat and I'll jump back to this as needed. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, let me get out of here, um, was the, the question that some folks are having about whether or not they need to file a form three. So in the rules, here's rule 702 talking about, um, the form three and you know 702 and the form three are mostly focused on the plugging, plugging bonds, which is what we always call them in the olden days. And that means plugging the well recla and reclaiming the site. Um, and so here's the requirement right here in B. Um, I hope you can see this okay. Maybe I should make it bigger. So it says operators of one or more wells will file um, a form three, a financial assurance plan. Um, and so the key here is operator of one or more wells. So rule uh, 201 excludes tribal wells. And for the time being, rule 702A excludes from this, re this requirement, um, excludes wells for which the operator has or will provide financial assurance to the federal government. And this exemption or exception or whatever it's called is going to continue um, until next October, 2023. So, so operators that have some wells that have federal financial assurance, some tribal wells, the way to know if you have any wells that are actually subject to the requirement for uh, filing a form three is to go here, you go to data and you go to operator name, address and financial assurance. And you put in your operator name or number. And I'm going to use an example from someone who reached out to me this past week. Um, and then you click here, you know, and it'll take you to this company detail page to which we have added all of this information, lists, everything that has to do with the new financial assurance. So if we go here to well status and designation data, so you can see this operator has 156 wells. If we go here, that well count, here's 156, is broken down by status, it's broken down by designation, and it's broken down with, by 
wells with federal financial assurance, and that's based on um, the operator having sent in a form 3B telling us that they have or will provide financial assurance to the feds. And it also breaks it down by tribal wells. And this is the key right here. What's left? What's left that's subject to rule 702, which means you have to send in a form three. This particular operator has zero. So they don't have to file a form three. They do have to deal with um, the new requirements for non-well facilities. And that's, if you don't have wells, that's not handled within the form three that you handle that directly with our financial assurance folks uh, to increase whatever you need to increase. Um, and that's all I had on my list to talk to you about. So that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Great, thanks, Jane. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the Q&A. Um, the first question, Diana, is for you. Um, can you just repeat the date for the grace period, please? Yeah, sure. It's just um, the COAs on the sundries had had a due date of November 1st, and engineering will be checking for compliance on those after December 15th. Great. Thank you, Diane. The next question is active well spreadsheet on the website. As far as uh, the inactive well spreadsheet that's used in the Forum 3, that would be obtained in the electronic Forum 3 itself, the template anyways, and you would just do the export option that's available um, in that section. Um, so that's where you would actually see the inactive well spreadsheet that's used for uh, importing. Uh, Chris, could I um, flip the website and you can give me the directions? Well, it's in the, I can, Oh, I can get it, Hannah, because it's in the form itself and I have a form open. Yeah. Okay, great. I will stop my share. Okay. So here we are. We're in a form three. We go to the well data section, scroll down to the inactive well list part of that. Jane, I'm not sure you're sharing. I'm not seeing it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, at least I'm not muted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Christopher. Okay, here we are. We're in a form three. We're gonna to go to the well data section. Once we're there, we scroll down to the inactive well list. If you click on this, this is auto-populated with all your inactive wells. If you click on this, it puts them into a spreadsheet for you. So, But if you had not put in any information, all those columns, the no, reasons for no production, plan return to production date and plan plugging date would all be blank. So you would need yeah. to populate those. Right, but it, it does it for you. The other way to see without going into your actual form three to see, to get this, is back on, like I said, we prepared all these different lists of things here on your company detail report page on the website. And here's an inactive well list right here. So if you haven't gone here, you might want to go and open all this stuff and see everything that we've provided that's the same as what gets pulled into the form three. And we keep adding things. So I hope that answers the question. Hannah, did they say cool or good? Um, I don't have anything yet, but um, they can be invited to put their feedback in the chat and we'll get back to it um, if needed. Oh, thanks, all good, great. Um, the next question is, did the refresh impact forms that have been finalized and submitted for COGCC review last week before Friday? Chris, you wanna? So as far as we know, we looked and I, my understanding was there may have been one form that was in that situation, but um, it, if that was the case, if you had actually submitted something, then um, you might want to reach out to us and we'll check oh. to make sure, but go ahead. Yeah, 
Go ahead, Jane. So our developer said that for the forms that have been submitted and are now in process, um, staff can, we're going to go in and we're going to hit a refresh. I think, anyway, you know what? If you submit a form, send me an email and we'll yeah. take care of it. Our developer is out this week. So I want to double check with him. Great, thanks, Jane. And I put Jane's email up right there on the um, shared screen for you to thanks, email Jane. her. Um, I don't have any other questions, but we'll give folks just a few more minutes to type those in if they have any. Ray, we usually would have gotten one by now, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if we don't get to a question somehow, you can always just email that to Jane and she'll get it answered for you. Um, thank you everybody for coming to the operator meeting. The next one is next week and we'll see you then. Have a great day. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Bye.